yeah, looks like we're live. I am just going to take a minute to link the recipes in the chat. So just give me a minute so that y'all can access them. All right, so the main thing that we're going to be making today is um, tuna casserole. So it's pretty easy to make and you can find a lot of the ingredients in the pantry. Um, just a reminder, the pantry is still open um, on Fridays by appointment only. So make sure to email um, you have Dearborn Pantry, if you want to request an appointment, um, you can request them until 5 p.m. the day before, so the Thursday before. You'll just want to make sure you send an email, um, and then we'll get you set up. So I just have one more thing to add in here, and then we'll be good to go. All right, cool. So welcome to another installment of Cooking with Colbath. I am Julie Colbath. I'm the coordinator of civic engagement in the Office of Student Life. Um, I oversee the pantry. And so today we're gonna be making, like I said, um, an easy tuna casserole. Um, so what we'll be using, um onion celery cans of tuna which we have lots of at the pantry um cream of mushroom soup which we also have at the pantry um peas butter breadcrumbs um we also have some cheese which reminds me i should grab it from the refrigerator So the first thing that we're going to do, I already have some water boiling. Sometimes I get frustrated that water can take a long time to boil. So I already um, started it boiling for the noodles. So you can see it's got some nice bubbles. So I measured out three cups of egg noodles. Um, I've never tried it with it. anything other than egg noodles. Um, I'm just gonna add it in. Um, but I think that it would be fine if you used um, like elbow macaroni or rotini noodles. Uh, eight to 10 minutes. All right, so the noodles. And I'm going to set a timer for eight minutes and then this goes in the oven. So I'm going to set my oven for 425. Um, probably going to be a little toasty in here, but at least I have air and conditioning. Alright, so while those are um, cooking, we need to chop an onion and some celery. Um, so I'll set y'all up right here. I'm wheel over my little table. Like that. Um, so I have two stalks of celery. Um, and you can see they're starting to not be like super great, but that's fine, right? Because they're still usable, so I took off the tops of them. Um, and so I'm lucky in my area, we um, were able to compost. The city picks up 
uh, compost as well as recycling and trash. I'm just gonna throw the tops of my celery in my compost bag. Um, and then I'm gonna take the tops off of this one as well. And sorta, of, and you also want to like, you don't want this whole bottom thing. Um, so we're gonna throw those and then I'm just gonna wash it pretty well. Um, celery that I had gotten from the store seemed a little bit dirty, um, but that's fine, right? Vegetables grow in the earth, which means that they're going to have dirt on them. All right. And then... So this says to um, kind of dice it. So I normally cut my celery in half. So now we've got two sides and then I'll just kind of like thinly slice it. Again, kind of whatever works for you with like knife skills and whatever you're comfortable with. Just make sure a lot of the times people recommend using a cloth so that you don't accidentally cut your fingers. So we'll set that one aside. And then we'll slice this one in half and do the same thing. And we're just gonna saute these with some onions. Um, It'll give it the tuna caps are all a nice flavor. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna set those aside. I'm gonna grab my onion. So I have a small onion. Um, I think it's just like a white onion. It's like pretty Whatever is easiest for you. You could peel it beforehand or you could just start cutting and then peel after. Um, so I'm just going to cut the ends off. And then I'm going to cut it in half. Have a nice dice. So I'm going to peel off the outer layer of the skin. You can also peel off this like first layer too if you want. Sometimes it ends up being like a little bit filmy, and I'm going to throw these in my compost as well. If any of you have a recommendation of a compost bin, drop it in the comments, because I bought one from Home Depot, and when it arrived, it was cracked, which made me very sad. So I'm going to dice my onion, um, so I'm making cuts one way, and then I'll turn it and make cuts the other way. And I'm not too worried about the size being perfect. Um, I don't mind chunks of onion and they'll end up cooking down when you saute them. So, great, perfect. So we have our onion and our celery. And so we're gonna saute it in some butter. So I just have a small saucepan here. Um, I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna grab one of my tablespoons of butter. And I'm just going to put it in the pan and it'll um, start to melt down. It's already pretty hot. If you don't have a very thick slab of butter, I would not recommend doing that with your hands because you will get burned. Um, so you can also just kind of write roll it around in the pan or you can use spatula. These little spatulas are my favorite. I think they say that they're for cookies, but I use them for all things. So they're uh, this is a non-sponsored recommendation, but they are the OXO brand and I use them for so many things. Um, cool, so most of our butter is melted. There's still a little bit of 
swirling around, but we're just going to add um, our onion and celery right into the pan. Um, and like I've mentioned before, when you're scraping things with a knife, you always want to use the like, so here's the blade, you want to use the other side so you're not, uh, you're not building the blade. I think um, so. I have a package of celery that I still need to do something with in my fridge. Um, you can freeze celery. You can freeze most things, which can um, it can be nice, right? When you aren't going to use something and you feel like you don't want to waste it, um, it's nice to have on hand, right? Because then, if I wanted to make tuna casserole in a couple of weeks, I would already have an onion and celery already ready. Um, yeah, so we're going to let those saute. I think it said five to seven minutes. I didn't set a timer. Um, if I have the timer for the noodles on right now, which tells me we have 20 seconds left before I will test them. So I'm just gonna grab a fork so that when they are ready, I will try them. And I'm gonna turn the timer off because it can be very annoying. So you want the noodles to be al dente, but the only way to know is if you try. Unless y'all have another way that you magically know if they're ready. Um, so that is the oven is preheated. Um, I'm stirring my onion and celery. So I'm having it burn. And the noodles are done. So I'm going to pull up the recipe, but we're just going to drain them. And then we'll probably rinse them under cold water. Um, rinsing things ends up like more or less helping them stop cooking, right? Because you don't want your um, noodles to continue to cook and get all soft before you're ready. So I'm going to wheel you over here. We've got our colander. Um, and I'm just going to set it in the sink. Ooh. Be careful when you're touching handles. Um, you know, my pot is hot. I'm going to my oven on. So I'm just going to fog up my glasses. All right. So our noodles are drained. We are going to rinse them with cold water. I'm just going to leave them in there. My sink's pretty clean um, until we need them. So these are still cooking. The onions are starting to get a little bit soft, um, which is what we want. I'm trying to think of how long they have been. A lot of the times, right, when they're soft, they get like sort of translucent. Um, you can sort of see through them a little bit better. Um, let's see what we need to do next. So we're cooking our onion and our celery and butter until tender, five to seven minutes. So in a large bowl, we're gonna combine our noodles, onion mixture when it's ready, our peas, soup, milk, cheese, tuna, and parsley. So I'm not a huge parsley person, so I'm just not going to add it. Um, you can do whatever you want. Might add to the flavor. But again, not a huge parsley person. Okay. 
I'm just going to start mixing the other stuff together, and then once this is ready, that will be great. So I'll wheel my little table back over. Let's jaw down. Um, I'll set this cutting board aside because we don't need it right now. Hoping everything will fit in this bowl. Um, I said to grab a large bowl, and I thought this one would be nice because you can at least see through it. Um, just going to stir it a little bit again. The onions, let me grab it and bring you over. The onions are starting to get a little bit brown. Um, so if you don't necessarily like that, you can easily like cook them at a lower heat. So a slower rate. Um, I don't mind if they get a little bit done. So I'm just going to turn it off. I think it's probably been about five minutes. Um, and they are sliced relatively thin, so they probably cook pretty fast. Um, and then that'll cook for a couple more minutes while we're putting everything together in our bowl. We've got our noodles. Um, we need onion mixture. Candle is not as hot because it was not above the oven. So I'm going to throw those in there. Nope, it's so good. Um, and then we have a third cup of milk. Um, I just have whole milk right now, so that's what I use. I'm pretty sure. Or um, you could use non-dairy milk if you prefer, um, but this still has cheese in it, right? So I don't know how it would be with non-dairy cheese. Um, I'm going to add peas. So the recipe called for two-thirds cup. It said that you should use frozen. I'm using um, canned. I feel like there won't be a huge difference. Um, you want a can of cream of mushroom soup, right? And a lot of the times with canned soups, you end up when you put them on the stove, you add water, but we're not going to be adding any water. We've got some liquid from our milk. So we'll use our spoon to get everything out. Um, Right, and I'm not always like a huge mushroom person, and I feel like, but I feel like cream of mushroom soups are a really good thing to just have on hand because um, it's good for a lot of like bases and stuff. Um, we need our tuna, of course. It would not be tuna casserole without it. And I should have already done that, but I didn't. So I'm going to open it up. I was surprised that. It only calls for one small can. Um, so I'm just going to drain it quick. I don't like to be calculated too often. Um, yep, I think that's going to just kind of be a good comforting uh, meal for people. So we've got our can of tuna, which again, we do have tuna at the pantry. And, and then I think the only other thing was cheese. Let me double check real quick. So I might have all the cheese, but it's sort of half in one and half in the other. Um, so we'll pop our butter. 
for We've got our cheese. I just have shredded cheddar cheese here. I'm gonna put it in my measuring cup. There's one and a half cups here because we'll use half of a cup for our topping. Um, and this will give it a nice like cheesy base. All right, I think we have everything in here. Um, I don't think it really calls for spices. I think you get a lot of the flavor from the um, from the onions and the celery and the cream of mushroom soup. So I'm just trying to mix it sort of evenly because we'll end up pouring it into um, a two quart um, casserole dish. I had to look up what that actually meant. Um, so it's the one that I have is an 11 by seven, sort of like your traditional like nine by 13 pans that you might make like cakes or brownies in. So this one's a little bit smaller. Um, you could definitely use a nine by 13, it'll just be thinner and you might, depending on how much topping you like, you might need a little bit more topping because you'll have a bigger surface area, right? So this looks pretty mixed to me. So we're gonna see, we have to make the topping, which should be pretty easy. Um, so we are going to melt our butter. Um, just making sure I'm not missing anything. So it'll be butter, breadcrumbs, and cheddar. Because again, I'm not a huge parsley person. So we'll switch over to here. I've got a tablespoon of butter in my little bowl. Um, I'm just gonna put it in my microwave. Normally I do about 10 second increments. Um, mostly because I don't want my butter to burn. Um, so I got a bowl so we can mix our topping in. Um, see, 10 seconds seems pretty good because then once I, um, I'm just gonna beat this a little bit with my fork. Um, so then it, that little chunk melts. So I'm gonna add that to my bowl. Better use that one, I guess. I'm gonna grab a little spatula to get all the buttery goodness. So I'm gonna add that. And then we need a half a cup of breadcrumbs and a half a cup of cheddar. So, this should be a half a cup of cheddar, so I'm just going to dump it in. And then breadcrumbs. Um, if you don't have them, you, if you don't have them, you can pretty easily make breadcrumbs if you have bread. So I'm going to add half a cup. That's a quarter cup. This is two. Um, if you have bread, you can one way, like if you don't have a blender or anything, is you can um, just put it in a bag and like use a rolling pin. Um, but if you have a blender or a food processor, you can throw bread in there. Um, you can throw olive oil and some spices if you'd like. Um, and if you want to dry it out a little bit, you can like after you've run it through the blender, you can put it in the oven. This is a good way, right, if you have some bread that you're not going to use. Um, so I'm going to see. It doesn't tell me to spray the dish, so I'm not going to. Um, so we'll go back over here. So we have this at the floor, 11 by 7 um, casserole dish. So we're going to dump. So easy. We're going to dump the noodle mixture in here and we're just going to get cheese bits. Big cheese fan. So we can dump it in there. We'll sort of spread it around so it's even. Um, and then 
we're just gonna evenly top it with our topping. So I'm just gonna use my hands. I think it's easier. Um, and then I have a little bit more control. Sometimes when I try to throw stuff like on, it'll, you know, if I was just dumping it in, it might all jump in one place and then it's hard to move it around. So, I wanna make sure you get the corners so that every little bit is covered so you get a nice, like, consistent bite. I'm making a little bit of a mess. And that's what sponges and dishcloths are for, to clean. All right, throw this one aside. We have our casserole topped with our breadcrumb cheese butter mixture. I'm just gonna throw it in the oven. Again, it's preset to 425. I'm gonna put a timer on for eight minutes. Oh. Still getting used to my oven. Um, I'm going to put a timer on for 18 minutes. And then while we're doing that, I need to do a little bit of meal prep. So I thought I would uh, take y'all along for the ride. Um, so what we're going to do is make some hard boiled eggs. Um, I think that'll be the easiest thing to do first. Um, so that they can just boil while we're making the lentil soup. Please don't mind my fishes piling up. Telling me my oven is ready again. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I have my pan. Hard boiled eggs is a good thing to do if you have some eggs that are like a little bit older. You don't know what you're gonna do with them. Because the older an egg gets, right, if you're trying to make like fried eggs or something, the, um, the white of the egg will spread a little bit more, right? So I'm carefully placing my eggs in a pan. I'm throw that away and I'm going to cover them with cold water, right? You don't want to. Um, you don't want to put anything like have really hot water so then it like messes with the temperature of the eggs and they can crack. Um, I don't know if you all have any tips on hard boiled eggs. I feel like people have their different methods. Um, something that I saw is that you could put a half a teaspoon of salt. So we'll try to do that. Um, that's supposed to help prevent the egg from like cracking and running out and supposedly it's also supposed to help when you're peeling them. But if you have any methods of peeling, please drop them below. Because I don't always know, and you know, it's just sometimes a free-throw. So I just added a half a teaspoon, that's helped. Um, so what we're gonna do is we'll take our pan with our eggs and our cold water and we'll move over here and I'll put it on this burner because we'll be making something else um so we're just going to bring these to a rolling point um the nice thing we set them and we forget about them until they're boiling and so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make some lentil soup um I've been wanting just like to make something easy that I can have for um, like a quick lunch. Sometimes between like meetings or errands and stuff, it's hard to always make time. Um, so I wanted to make eggs because those are a good like little snack source of protein or you can make deviled eggs, egg salad. You can cut them up and put them on normal salad, eat them for breakfast. There are lots of things. If y'all have good suggestions on things to do with hard boiled eggs, Again, feel free to drop them in the comments. I feel like eggs are a nice cheap source of protein, so I definitely recommend having some on hand. 
container, so we are throwing it in the garbage. Um, cool. So the next thing, right, like I talked about, is we're going to make lentil soup. It has very few ingredients. We kind of a big can. So I have my pot. Just want to make sure it's like a big enough pot for um, you to have essentially like five cups of substance in there. Um, great, so we're going to use our cutting board again. So I'm going to wheel myself back over. So this calls for half of an onion. Um, this can easily be like doubled, tripled. Um, so this will probably make about four servings if you're eating like a one cup um, serving of soup. So I've got half an onion here that I was using earlier today. Um, so again, I'm just going to dice it. And then I'm also, I like to have a little bit of carrot in my lentil soup. So I have a couple carrots. Um, you can peel them if you want. I don't know how to do it. So I'm going to cut off the ends. Um, and then I'm going to throw those in the compost. And an important part, right, when you're cutting is to make a flat surface. Um, I think it's hard, right, sometimes with, uh, like smaller carrots. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it in half. So we have two halves and then we have a flat surface that I can do similar to the celery or then they're just sort of half moon shapes. Um, we're going to saute those like we did, um, the celery and onions. And that'll be a good base for our soup. All right. Um, these ones are a little bit bigger, so um, I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut it in half again, so we have quarters, so then things are more or less like a similar size, so they'll sort of cut more evenly. Um, And I might only end up using one carrot because I feel like this one ended up giving me a little bit more than I expected. So we'll do the same thing with the little bit we have left. We'll cut it in half to make a flat edge. We'll cut it in half again. And then we'll just slice. It's getting warm in here. I think you could also write a few like spinach in your lentil soup. You could easily add um, spinach. I'm going to do that until the end because spinach wilts really easy. Um, so we'll go back to here. I'm going to turn up our um, oven. And I'm just going to toss in a little bit of oil um, to help saute the onion and carrot. And then I'm just going to throw this in the saucepan and it'll ooh, saute. And similarly, we'll um, cook it until the onions are soft or the carrots are tender. Throw that in there. Let that sit for a couple minutes. Um, after 
that we'll add our lentils and our broth. You can use any sort of broth that you like. Obviously, if you don't use a vegetable broth, it will not be vegetarian. Um, so just keep that in mind if you have any dietary preferences. Um, you can, like I've sort of talked about before, sorry, the window's very bright. Um, you can make your own broth. You kind of keep your vegetable scraps. Um, so you can just take and kind of boil water with your vegetable scraps and it'll make a good broth. A nice way to reuse things and then not have to buy a broth at the store. So you can see our onions and our carrots are cooking and our eggs, the water is getting pretty hot. Um, we're gonna want to bring it to a rolling boil. So we'll actually want like big bubbles coming up. Um, and then the nice thing, right, is you can just put a lid on it and turn it off and then you just let it sit for like 10 minutes. Um, people also sometimes use vinegar, I think, in the water um, to help it preventing from like breaking and the egg coming out. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen one of these before, but it's an egg timer, which you can also use to see right like how well you want your egg done, right? So then it'll start to um, get like white and so you can tell, right? Oh, it's at the soft stage, that's the medium stage. This is a fun thing that my sister gave me. I had never seen them before. Our onions and carrots are starting to get a little bit more tender. Probably can't see it very well. Um, but I'm going to use, this is the fork that I used for my noodles, so I'm just going to pierce the carrots to see how done they are. Still a little bit of resistance, so I'm going to let them cook for a little bit longer. The nice thing though too, Ray, is while they're cooking, they're going to end up absorbing some of the um, broth, which will also help them. Uh, and we've got seven more minutes on our tuna casserole, um, which I think you can serve hot. I'm not really sure about freezing it. I feel like it'll probably freeze fine. Um, and generally, my rule of thumb is once I've made something. If it's in the fridge for more than seven days, it needs to go. So you can either, right, make it into something else or throw it out, compost it. But after like about a week, you start to run the risk of different like bacteria growing. So consume at your own discretion. So I think that these are pretty done. Again, I'm sure it's really hard to tell. But um, so we're going to go, we're going to grab our stock. So I have chicken broth. Um, this is four cups. So we're just going to dump this whole thing in our pot. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit so it doesn't fizzle everywhere. Um, so we're just going to pour this in. No. Cool. So that's four cups. 
you can also, um, like I sort of showed before, a lot of the time we all use plastics for the kind of, you know, granules or even glass teaspoons for every cup. I find that easier it kind of takes up less space in my cupboard. And then I've got a bag of lentils. Um, and we're going to measure out one cup of lentils. I'm just putting a cup in a one cup measuring cup. Lots of cups. And then we'll just pour it in here. And then basically, you just let it sit. Um, the lentils will absorb the water or the broth, and um, then they'll expand, and they won't be as hard, right? Like, I can't get my fingernail through the lentil right now. And so you can just cook it. I think it'll be about 20 minutes. Um, this is about how long you normally cook. Lentils, if you're just like making them for the easy, it's about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, you can kind of do it to your desired tenderness. Um, and depending on, you know, I know that with like some different like crushed lentil soups, I think you can like cook them longer so the lentils continue to break down a little bit more. Or you could put like part of it in the blender, all of it in the blender, use an immersion blender. I don't have one of those, um, and I like, I don't always like, like, rogue soups, I like having different flavors in my soup. Um, yeah, and then our eggs are still starting to boil, they're not rolling yet, um, so let's keep letting them sit. And it'll be easy, and then we have three minutes left on our tuna casserole. So this is what I like to do is like if I'm going to be in here, I could walk away and go do something else. Um, but sometimes I like to just do some prep since I'm in here anyway. Um, so I'm excited to have some eggs for the week. Normally, I mean, I at one time only eat like one hard boiled egg. I normally won't make more than like six just to feel like I'm not wasting them. Um, I don't know if you can freeze hard boiled eggs. That's one thing I don't know. Generally, I'm all about just throwing stuff in the freezer, um, but I'm not entirely sure on that one. So I think you can freeze like eggs if you've cracked them. You know, sometimes, right, you'll see like frozen eggs that are mixed together and then you can unfreeze them. And use them in like scrambles or quiches, um, stuff like that. I just noticed normally I am semi unintentionally wearing a UM Dearborn shirt. Today I'm wearing one of my AmeriCorps shirts. Um, if you don't know much about AmeriCorps, you can always feel free to message and I can tell you all about it. Um, I did two years of AmeriCorps, one in Maine and one in Seattle. Um, and it was a good, like, transition between, um, undergrad and ending up back in grad school. So if anybody's looking for a job, you could always look at AmeriCorps. If you're having some trouble finding something or, you know, AmeriCorps is a great program to, like, give back to your community or learn more about a different community. Um, understand more about, like, social justice and stuff like that. There's also, there are like a bunch of different kinds of AmeriCorps. One of them is, um, oh, our casseroles. If you want to stay local, one of them is um, City Year, which is happens in Detroit. So you could also check that out. Ooh, I'm excited, y'all. Look at the nice browning of our breadcrumbs. So, I mean, nothing is like raw. So it's not like it has to bake 
for super long. Um, it's not like you're trying to reach an internal temperature, right? With different meats and stuff, it can be good to have a meat thermometer, um, just so you know that things are cooked, especially if, you know, like you're using something that uh, has been in your fridge for a while and it's questionable. So it's good to make sure it's cooked to the proper temperature. Shut this for a second. Um, so that it's like killed off bacteria. Okay, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna put some hot pads on my little island so that we can put our casserole on there. And I wish you could hear sounds. I also wish you could smell smells um, through a computer, but obviously you can hear sounds, but it's hard when the sound is sort of small. So you can start to hear the um, water like rolling to a boil for the eggs. We've got our casserole. So easy. And like I said, I'm going to turn the oven off, lower the temperature oven here. Um, most of the stuff you can find at the pantry, right? We never seem to not have tuna. Um, so you can definitely find tuna. We have cans of cream of mushroom soup. I think you could probably use another like cream of something soup I've never tried but you know, a lot of them are sort of similar. Um, we have cans of peas for sure. Um, and then we have different noodles. I wouldn't recommend it with like spaghetti noodles. I think it's probably too thin. I think it's nice to have um, a noodle that kind of can like absorb some of the creamy juiciness. Um, and not have something that's like, I don't know, super thin and doesn't actually like hold much. So you can see that this is starting to roll to a boil. So we're gonna turn those off. Um, well, yeah, I'm gonna turn them off. I'm gonna grab my lid. I'm gonna keep it on the burner. I'm just put my lid on. Um, and the set a timer for 10 minutes. I know the um, the website that I had gotten this off of. This is how I normally do them. Um, the website that I had gotten it off of says that sometimes she'll take one egg out um, and kind of try like rinse it under cold water um, to see if it's fully cooked. So kind of uh, sacrificing one egg for the sake of all the eggs. Um, so yeah, and once that's done, um, we'll end up just running them in some cold water again to kind of help stop them from cooking. Um, right, I think when you sort of overboil them, um, that's when the yolk gets like that gray color. Um, so I think like 10 to 12 minutes is kind of the like right amount. Um, and right if you like it a little bit more done, keep it in uh, longer if you don't take it out sooner. Um, yeah. The lentil soup still doesn't look much different. Um, you can tell won't be able to tell, but I'll show you anyway. Um, the lentils are starting to absorb a little bit of the liquid because um, it seems like they're becoming a little bit more prevalent in here. Um, once this is done, though, I'll just season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. You could also add garlic if you wanted. Um, it can be like in Mediterranean restaurants or like Lebanese restaurants, oftentimes they'll serve it with a lemon wedge and so if you want you can always squeeze some lemon juice in there um i'm not always a like fan of very strong lemon flavor so i normally just eat it like this um and this refrigerates really well and you could easily freeze it um 
So it's nice to have for like, you know, an easy lunch. Um, you could easily serve it with like pita bread or um, any sort of like sandwich or a salad. That's what I plan to do is trying to eat some less sweets. Um, so just, you know, for lunch, I'm probably gonna try to have my lentil soup and some different forms of salad with my eggs. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Got lots of vegetables at the grocery store. Um, cool. Well, it's 4.50 um, and this soup will probably take at least 10 more minutes, but I can always take a picture when it's done. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cooking with Colbath. If you have any suggestions on things that we should make, throw them in the comments. Um, I'm always looking for new recipes and I always think it's good to try new things. Um, so definitely let us know and yeah, I hope that maybe you'll try these recipes. If you do, let us know. Um, it's always nice to have some different flavors in your life and try some new things. Um, yeah, thanks again for joining and we'll see you in two weeks. Or again, who knows what we'll make. You should just make some suggestions in the chat, even if you're watching this after the fact. So just some things. We'll see what I can do. All right, signing off. See y'all later.